Natalie Barney was an influential woman with access to great writers and musicians, but historians have placed prominence on the social and sexual aspects of her life. While some scholars have touched on the idea that Barney had influence within the literary community, an overwhelming majority of the research surrounding Barney's life has neglected to recognize the significance of her salon to women writers. Barney's reputation, her access to individuals of influence within the literary community, her desire to bring together enlightened minds from around the world, and her openness about her sexuality helped build a platform for women writers associated with her salon. Natalie Barney was an American expatriate that came from a wealthy family. As such, she had the means to live abroad and write without being concerned with finances. She also held a salon every Friday afternoon from approximately 1900 well into the 1960s. Development of the salon led to Barney being able to offer women writers a platform on which to showcase their works, and Barney's reputation had everything to do with that. Not only was Barney drawn to women of great talent and acclaim, but she also wrote about her love affairs with women openly. Her first book, Quelques Portraits Sonnettes de Femmes, published in 1900, was devoted to her love affairs with women. Barney's first great love affair that lasted many years was with a woman by the name of Liane de Pougy. De Pougy was a highly sought-after courtesan who traveled the world at the behest of her clientele. She was well-known not only throughout Paris, but also Berlin, London, and Rome. Although de Pougy was a courtesan, she was also a writer. De Pougy's publication of Sapphic Idol, a poem about her love affair with Natalie Barney, followed shortly after the publication of Barney's first work. All of this was in view of the public. If Barney was not the topic of conversation before, she certainly was following the openness about her romance with the courtesan. De Pougy wrote in a letter to Barney in 1901, The idol has seen the light and the public is scrambling, that's the word, for these scraps of us and our former desires. Not all of the relationships that brought attention to Barney were genuine love affairs. Her relationship with Remy de Gromont, a highly influential person within the literary community, was controversial. While it is generally believed that they both cared for one another on an intellectual level, the attraction that de Gromont had for Barney was not returned. However, this did not stop him from writing letters to her publicly. From January 1912 to October 1913, de Gromont's personal letters to the Amazon appeared every month in Le Mercure de France. Barney's relationships were relevant in creating her celebrity and visibility in a way that brought even more people into Barney's salon. Barney knew everyone, and more important, she knew how to pull them together to the advantage of women writers. Suzanne Rodriguez stated in Wild Heart, A Life, that one of Natalie's most likable qualities, her sincere desire to help people fulfill themselves, was a great boon in running a salon. She went on to state that Ms. Barney used her connections to help people find publishers, translators, or even help them with ideas for an introduction for some of their works. This was extremely significant, as very few women had access to those services. Barney's Salon was a space not only where writers would come to meet other people within the literary community, but also a space in which they could read their work aloud and receive critique from others. These salon critiques were particularly significant to women writers due to the fact that they were denied entrance into the Académie Française. Entry into the Academy would have afforded women writers the opportunity to study writing formally and would have offered them the connections that they needed within the literary community. However, since women writers were not allowed into the Académie Française, they did not have alternatives where they could get ideas from other writers outside of Barney's salon. That was a matter of great concern to Barney. Thus, Barney's Fridays focused exclusively on women writers in 1927. Every Friday afternoon, a gathering would commence, and though the general number of attendees was usually 30 to 35, there were days when 50 to 100 guests would be there. The year that Barney established the Academy, every Friday was devoted to a particular woman writer. On the afternoon in which Gertrude Stein received her accolades, there were at least 200 attendees. There were many reasons why Natalie Barney's salon was able to provide a platform for women writers. Among them were Barney's reputation, her access to individuals of influence within the literary community, her desire to bring together enlightened minds from around the world, and her openness about her sexuality. By relegating Barney to the social-sexual sphere, historians have robbed Barney of her greatest achievement, providing a platform for women writers during a time when they were largely ignored.